With us now is Lee Lorenzen. Lee was with Xerox when the star system was developed there, and Lee is now a software engineer with Digital Research Incorporated. And next to Lee is Bennett Wiseman. Ben is the Associate Director of the Market Analysis Service at Infocorp. Ben, it seems like the Macintosh was introduced, I guess, as a computer for the home, and then uh, uh, and, and now we're trying to break into the office with the Macintosh. What, what opposition is there going to be? Well, the uh, system has been built to be very easy to use, and very easy to install, and there are some limitations that have been put on that to get those compromises. And the question is really whether the ease of use will get them into the office or whether the limitations will prevent uh, their now, acceptance. What kind of limitations? We're talking about limitations. Things like speed of the network, uh, mm -hmm. interfaces to other products. Uh, all of these things have been discussed, and Apple's very aware that they need them, but uh, the market still has to deliver on them. And mm -hmm. I think for business users, particularly larger business users, to be comfortable with what's going on, they'll have to see a lot more hard product and be convinced that Apple's going to give them the kind of support and uh, connection capability that uh, they're going to demand. Now, that may not be the case for smaller businesses where the attractiveness of the package and uh, things like the laser writer will make it very useful immediately for them and they won't have concerns about how does this link to my IBM right. mainframe. Mm -hmm. Ben, in, in your report to your clients on this, you, you made an interesting comment that for Apple to succeed here with the Mac office, they have to kind of tone down their hype. What did you mean by that? Well, business users as opposed to home users tend to be extremely conservative, and a lot of the things that are attractive about Macintosh uh, work against the basic policies of a lot of office systems. They don't like openness and lack of control and uh, the ease of proliferation <laughs> of software and products, which is really the fundamental uh, theology behind a product like Macintosh and the Macintosh office. And if the advertising goes in such a way that uh, makes business users feel uncomfortable, uh, as opposed to IBM, who does everything possible to make them feel as supported and as loved as possible. Right, They'll no. run into difficulty. We, uh, advertising we're obviously that. trying to uh, break into another direction with Jim, which is a product that Lee's going to talk about, is from the IBM PC side into uh, taking that kind of a same, same interface and using that. Uh, Lee, can you talk about uh, Jim at all? Sure. I think the best way to talk about it is to actually get a demonstration of the product. As you can see, we're running here on an IBM PC AT. And I'll just pull up a calculator, which is an example of one of the desk accessories that we have. And as you can see, the color is really very vivid with Jim here. I'll go ahead and close that window out, and then we'll go into, this is the Jim desktop, which actually provides a visual look at the filing system, the underlying filing system of DOS, which is, it essentially replaces the A greater than, which is a difficult concept for users to, to uh, use. And let me bring up one of the pictures that we have here with Jim Draw. We'll click on that. and. Jim Draw is a, is a graphical drawing package which can be used for drawing things like you're going to see here in a minute, such as a video camera, or also for doing business presentations, uh, the kinds of foils with text that is the predominant part. As you can see here, we have a camera. We can come up here to the Edit menu and duplicate that. important thing here is that now we've got two cameras, and we just have to move to this second one and, and drop it down like that, and it's as easy as that to use. The other important concept here is we can take that camera and it's actually not just a single element as it appears on the screen, but many elements. And we can ungroup those elements. We see all the, the various pieces that make so up the camera. So this is a difference between a paint and a draw program, basically, is a, a paint program is just like a piece of paper. Once you've painted over, drawn over something, it's gone. And here the individual components and pieces are still available for, for moving or regrouping. That's and right. And we've actually selected one of those objects here and then we can come over here and give it a color, like so. So we got a red okay, body. So you draw it in black and white, and then you can add the color. Or you could you could have drawn it in color as you were going along, but you can add the color at really any point in the process. Okay, Lee, it, it looks like a kind of color version of a Mac type uh, interface. You're running this now on a PC AT. Is that the kind of machine you need to run, Jim? Well. Jim will run on machines like the PC. It even runs on the PC Junior. Um, it requires 256K of memory and um, obviously some kind of graphic screen to run. However, when you actually get into versions that support the color, it does take a machine more of the horsepower of an, of an AT or a Tandy 2000, that type of machine, to really um, handle the color effectively. Okay, Lee, thanks.